Welcome to Village Point Church. We are so delighted that you connected with us this morning. I want to invite you to raise your voices real strong and let us all together sing our praises to our great God. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, 
Show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink these living waters. Tired and broken, peace unspoken, rest beside these living waters. Cause there's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God and there our hope is secure do not fear anymore praise the Lord of living water Christ is calling a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of your water. to share with you some opportunities that are coming up. And first, I would ask you to fill out our connection card, our digital connection card. You can go to our website, villagepoint.church connect, and fill out our connect card there. That way you register your presence here with us 
connected with us this morning. And also, if you have a prayer request, please don't hesitate to write it down. We would love to pray for you. And next, we have also an opportunity to help local families in this time of unprecedented need. So you can join us. This is a food drive. We are asking for non-perishable food, paper goods, toiletries, and th these things will be given to the Elk Grove Food Pantry. So if you're interested, you can go to our website, and there's some information there. We need some donations as well as some people to help with uh, volunteering and distributing the, the food and picking food up from the car. So if you have any questions, you can send an email to info at villagepoint.church, but you can find information about the food drive on our website as well. We would like to invite you for another worship night. It will be on Friday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. Please join us for that worship night. Now let's take this time and we'll continue worshiping the Lord through our giving. And this is really an opportunity that we have to give back to the Lord what he's blessed us with. He's a great provider and we want to invest in the kingdom of God through the ministries here at Village Point Church. There's three ways to give. You can give online, you can text to give, or you can mail in a check. So I'm going to pray for us. We have an opportunity to do that this morning. Father, thank you for your provision. Thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that these offerings will cause the gospel to be advanced, the good news to be proclaimed, that many will come and hear of Jesus King, Jesus, the Lord of Lords. And we worship you and we're so thankful for your provision to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. me with a melody you surround me with a song of the liverance from my enemies to love my feet are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer Child of God, I no longer 
the Father. I am surrounded by songs of the living. adopting us as sons and daughters. We are indeed children of the living God. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us, for rescuing us, for making it possible for, you to, for us to be called children of God. We worship you. We exalt your name this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's watch this video. Greetings, Village Point Church. My name is Isabella, and I just want to share with you some good news. We have two graduating seniors in our church family. Graduating from Elk Grove High School, we have Josh Kastik and Giovanni Gamino. Let me share with you their future plans. Josh is planning on attending Harvard College and the University of Wisconsin to study directing and filmmaking. Yavani is planning on attending Harper College or Elmhurst College to study personal finance. Each year we also like to uh, celebrate eighth graders moving on to high school. So this year we have Tyreek Stokes and Amelia Sentman. Congratulations on this great achievement for all of you. Would you join me in a word of prayer? We'd love to pray and bless these students. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up our graduates to you. Thank you for bringing them through all these years of study for each mentor, teacher, and administrator that has played a positive role in their formation. God, we thank you for them, and we pray for your continued guidance and care as they step out into a season of greater decision-making that might set the course for the rest of their lives. Would your presence go before them and surround them? Would they come to know you, trust you, and love you more deeply? God, I pray that you'd surround them with wise and trustworthy, godly individuals that would have a great influence on their lives. We thank you, Lord, for how far you've brought them and bless them over this journey ahead. Now, Lord, we'd just like to bring up as well all the students completing this year and continuing their studies next year. Lord, we know it's been a challenging and at times disappointing year of interruptions and rapid adjustment to unforeseen circumstances, Father God. So now we just wanna ask for your blessing as they finish out this year. We pray for their minds, for their emotions, for their disappointments. 
God, we thank you that you love and you care over each one of them. And we also want to celebrate, Lord, the resilience and strength and determination to complete this year. Thank you, God, that you love us and that you care for us. And we pray a blessing over all of these students. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. My name is Leandro Nogueira. I'm the lead pastor at Village Point Church. I am so glad you're joining us today. If you are tuning in for the first time and if you haven't done so yet, would you please fill out our digital connection card? This is a way that we know that you are with us, but also a way for us to be praying, know how to pray for you and your family, and also to give some more information about our church. Do you remember a time you found yourself at a crossroads? You were presented with two options, uh, buy or rent, perhaps relocate or stay put, switch jobs or play it safe, pick a local college or move out of state. The options were both very appealing, they both looked promising and exciting. But the more you considered your options, the more you realized that they would most likely lead to completely different outcomes. Well, this morning, we will turn to Proverbs chapter 4, and we will look at two ways to live, two paths to live. However, differently than your career or your financial or your housing, your schooling choices that could potentially result in different outcomes, opting for the wrong way, choosing the wrong path, may result in death. It's pretty serious. Before I read the passage, let me recap last week's sermon real quick. We saw last week that the Proverbs aren't wisdom in and of themselves. On the contrary, they are wise principles meant to teach us how to make God-honoring decisions in the various areas of our lives. Secondly, the Proverbs put forth the truth that there's no distinction, there's no divide between what happens on Sundays at church and our job and our parenting, our relationships, our marriage, or even our hobbies. In other words, God is as concerned about spiritual things as he is with the rest of our lives. And then thirdly, and and the most important thing that I said last week is that Jesus is the wisdom of Solomon. He is the fulfillment of Proverbs and all of the law. He is the power of God and the wisdom of God in human flesh. Like Solomon, you and I must pursue a relationship with wisdom, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he will watch over us. He will preserve us if we love him and remain faithful to him. Now Proverbs 4, let's pick it up on verse 10. It says this, listen my son, accept my words and you will live many years. I am teaching you the way of wisdom. I'm guiding you on straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Don't let go. Guard it, for it is your life. Keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by. Verse 16, for they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. They are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. Right from the start, 
Solomon reminds us again that parents have been given the amazing responsibility, the privilege of passing down wisdom to the next generation. As Christ followers, parents or grandparents, as you play a role of a spiritual parent to someone, as you mentor and model faith to the young, the goal is to pass down godly wisdom to them in such a way that they will not only be equipped to live wisely, but they will also faithfully teach their kids to live wisely as well. We must introduce the next generation to Christ and as they see Christ in us, as they watch us trust and, and follow Christ and live on a mission for Him, as they see us even in our imperfection, as they see us demonstrate who Christ is, may they learn from us what it means to be humble and to be responsible, how to serve generously, how to display an ethic work, how to have a sincere heart and a devoted commitment to Jesus and to his mission. May they see wisdom being lived out in our lives. Now, if the parent or the mentor has the responsibility to pass down true or godly wisdom, then the son's responsibility or the recipient of that wisdom has the responsibility to listen and to obey. Look at verse 10. Listen, my son, accept my words and you will live many years. The word listen is spoken very often at my house. In fact, with four kids at home, we say it multiple times. And I can tell you that most times they do listen. But other times, and I, I jokingly tell them that I'm going to say it in both Portuguese and English to make sure you understand it, instead of doing what we teach them or what we told them, they reject our instruction and behave as if they've never heard what we asked of them. As a result, mistakes are made, fights happen, there's crying and sadness and privileges are taken away. Now, the same is true of us, isn't it? How many times have we acted unwisely and walked the foolish way because we refused to listen and to obey God's instructions given to us in His Word? How many times have we thought we knew better than God or acted as if we knew better than God and ended up in big trouble? Listen, my son or my daughter. Perhaps you have to be reminded of that this morning. Listen, accept my words, and as a result, you will live many years. Listening and accepting, and accept means active obedience, are essential steps one must take in order to live wisely. Verse 11 says, I'm teaching you the way of wisdom. I'm guiding you on straight paths. If you take my words to heart, when you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to my instruction. Don't let go guarded, for it is your life. Now the next few verses here reveal two ways to live. A way of wisdom and a way of foolishness. Let's look at their distinct characteristics. The first one is the way of foolishness. That's the way of uh, the troublemakers. They can't sleep until they have done what is evil. They are robbers of sleep unless they make someone stumble. In other words, they are restless if they are not involved in evil and they won't stop until they brought someone harm. 
They take pleasure on darkness. Lost like those who travel in fog and they practice wickedness. Let me illustrate with a few recent stories. A woman in India watches as her sister is dragged off by Hindu nationalists. She doesn't know if her sister is alive or dead. A man in North Korean prison camp is shaken awake after being beaten unconscious. The beatings begin again. A woman in Nigeria runs for her life. She escapes from Boko Haram who kidnapped her. She's pregnant. And when she returns home, her community will reject her and her baby. A group of children are laughing and talking as they come down to their church's sanctuary after eating together. Instantly, many of them are killed by a bomb blast. It's Easter Sunday in Sri Lanka. This is the way of foolishness, wicked and harmful, blinded by self-centered Sin and sin, and, and the end result is darkness and death. It's eternal separation from God. Now, there's also the way of wisdom. This is the way of righteousness. Those who walk in the way of wisdom have a clear path, they do not stumble. They like the light of dawn, they shining brighter and, and brighter. They hold on to instruction. They avoid. They do not associate with evil doers. And verse 14 says it clearly. The one who follows the way of wisdom keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by. Don't even go close to the way of foolishness. Don't be tempted by it. Leave it alone. Don't even go close to it. Now David taught the way of wisdom to his son Solomon, who is now passing down wisdom to his children. If we compare Proverbs 4 with Psalm 1, which is a wisdom psalm, we can see how much the son learned from his father. Let's turn to Psalm 1 for a moment and notice the similarity. Psalm 1 says this, How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Verse 4, the wicked, on the other hand, are not like this. Instead, they're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. Like in the Proverbs passage that we read, what we find in these verses is a contrast between two ways to live. The way of the wise and the way of the wicked. Every human being has a choice to make between two paths. One way leads to triumph and another leads to destruction. There is a delight that comes to those who follow God's wisdom. And that path results in a deep sense of joy that comes from completely and utterly abiding in God's grace. Now you are blessed by not walking not standing or sitting with the wicked. In other words, you are to exclude yourselves completely from joining in with the ungodly. 
Don't walk in step with or don't take advice from the wicked. Don't share in the sinner's way. Don't sit in the circle of scoffers. Now let me pause here for a moment. David is not telling us to exclude ourselves from any kind of relationship with people that aren't Christ followers. He's not saying that we should only hang out with church people and not care to share the good news of Christ with others. Instead, we are to go to reach out to those without Christ without compromising the message of the gospel. That's the difference. The instruction here is not, is not for us to leave everybody alone and do life just with people that understand and believe and go in the same direction that we do. The instruction for, here, uh, for us here is to not take part in the ways of the wicked. We are to live differently, to live wisely, to be salt and light to stay firm in our faith even in times of uncertainty. The person who chooses the way of wisdom delights in the Lord's instruction. In other words, it not only conform, conforms to it, not only listens and accepts God's word, but, but loves God's word, takes pleasure in God's commands. And he meditates on it day and night. In the way of wisdom, if the way of the wisdom results in happiness, the outcome of the way of foolishness or the wicked way is the absence of joy and blessedness. Here's what verse 4 says. The wicked are not like the wise. Their roots are shallow. There's no foundation. They're, they're like chaff that the wind blows away. They, are, they do not bear fruit. They're not blessed and prosperous. The outcome for those who choose the wicked way does not end well. Look at verse 5. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. Two ways to live. Wisdom or foolishness. Two outcomes. Peace and joy and prosperity and, and delight in God and fruit bearing. Or poverty and, and the absence of peace and chaos and ultimately destruction. Here's how one commentator summarizes it. Foolishness is trying to live your life in the darkness. You can't see the way things really are, so you keep ruin, ruining your life and falling into misery. But wisdom is like the light of the sun that shows you how things really are so that you can follow progressively the right course in life. Now, how do you stay in the wisdom path? There's no doubt that's the path we ought to stay on. That's the path we ought to follow. We have to reject the path of foolishness. But how do you stay on the wisdom path? And the answer is definitely not on your own. Not trying really hard. Not hiding away from the world around you. Again, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. We must embrace God's mission to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus while at work, while at home, at family gatherings, at school, at sports events, and, and at business meetings. How do we stay in the way of wisdom? And the answer is this, through Jesus Christ. You stay in the path of wisdom through Jesus Christ. He alone makes it possible. 
We need to know the person of Jesus and to remain connected to him in order to walk in the way of wisdom. Jesus said in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Remain in me and I in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me, says Jesus Christ. Wisdom without Jesus is unattainable. You can't stay in the path of wisdom on your own. You have to do it, and it's only possible to do it through Jesus. And I believe what Jesus is saying here in John 15 is, 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 is applicable to us today, is that as you live your life in a world that is constantly enticing you with options and, and choices of, of, of various kinds, a world that is offering you an alternative way to live, you must choose Him, the wisdom of God, and you must remain committed to Him and to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us and wholeheartedly follow His ways. Now before I pray, I would like to invite you right where you are, to close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to take an inventory of your life. Are you walking in the way of foolishness? Is that what your actions and attitudes show? Are you giving in to your sinful desires? Are you embracing, fostering unhealthy patterns that will lead to destruction? Are you walking too closely with people that do not fear God like you and that are leading you away from Him? Today is the day to turn, to avoid, to reject the way of foolishness and to jump on the path of the way of wisdom, and it's only possible through Jesus Christ. Are you walking in the way of foolishness, or are you walking in the way of wisdom? Are you listening, and, and, and not only listening, but accepting, not only accepting, but submitting and, and taking pleasure and delighting and trusting God's word for your life? Are you trusting that he knows exactly what tomorrow holds and if we want him to lead us we must submit everything to him you see only then you will be able to remain in the way of wisdom let me pray for us this morning father thank you for your word today i pray that your word will challenge us and shape us and mold us and refine us. God, would you reveal the areas of our lives, the areas that we need to surrender to you, to turn. Perhaps we've taken the wrong path and, and we are indeed walking and making some pretty foolish decisions and, and we need to turn. I, I ask, would, Holy Spirit, would you convict us this morning? May we turn it to you and, and give it up and give it to you and choose to follow the way of wisdom. And we also recognize that we don't have what it takes. We are not strong enough. We will never be strong enough without Jesus and without the power of the Holy Spirit. So we ask, would you help us in the journey? God, we do choose the way of wisdom. We need you to lead us there, to help us stay there, to help us always to turn there when we get off track. We love you, Jesus. And as we do all these things, we pray that you would help us and give us opportunities to also lead others in the way of wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing this closing song together.
your will be done, my God and Father, as in heaven, so on earth. My heart is drawn to self-exalting. Help me seek your kingdom first. As Jesus walked, so I shall walk, held by your same unchanging love. Be still, my soul, oh, lift your voice and pray, Father, not my will, but yours be done. How in that garden you persisted, I may never fully know the fearful weight of true obedience. It was held by Him alone. What wondrous faith to bear that cross, to bear my sin. What wondrous love my hope was sure. When there my Savior prayed, Father, not my will, but yours be done. When I am lost, when I am broken, in the night of fear and doubt, Still I will trust in my good Father. Yes, to one great King I bow. As Jesus rose, so I shall rise in ransom glory at the throne. My heart restored, with all your saints I sing. Father, not my will, but yours be done. As we go forth, our God and Father, lead us daily in the fight that all the world might see your glory and your name be lifted high. And in this name we overcome, for you shall see us safely home. Now as your church, we lift our voice and pray, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And in this name we overcome, for you shall see us safely home. Now as your church, we lift our voice and pray, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Father, not my will, but yours be done. Father, not my will, but yours be done. it is in heaven. Thanks for joining us today. Have a blessed week.